Hello, hello, Sorika. It's amazing to have you here. Thank you. Uh, so first thing first, I want to know about you. Please tell us your story. How did you become a face yoga expert and how it changed your life? Oh, well, first of all, Claudia, thank you for having me. I was so excited to talk to you. <laughs> and I'm so happy to be here. So first, thank you. Yeah. My and... pleasure. <laughs> oh, so, yes, your question was, who am I? <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> so my name is Sarika. And um, great to meet you. And I am Japanese, but I lived and worked in 14 countries around the world. Oh, wow, that's <laughs> in, impressive. In four <laughs> continents. But yes, you never know what happens with life because I did a massive career change. I was working for the United Nations. And now <laughs> I am doing something completely different, uh, including face yoga. So that's kind of a... Super, super quick summary of <laughs> myself. <laughs> this is like, it's a big change in life. Definitely. Yeah. And it was never, I never intended this to happen. It was everything, you know, is was organic and kind of through instinct and inspiration. <laughs> That's even better where you just keep with the flow, go with yeah. the flow and then just life bring you gifts. And you just accept them, right? Yeah, no, it's been really fun and interesting. And through this journey, I got to meet so many fantastic people, including you. It's like all coincidences. <laughs> yes, we are both fellow breakers. So we were part of the, the break fellowship that happened 2022 and 2023 mm -hmm. in Spain, thanks to uh, Impact Hub and um, the European Union for funding this amazing experience. So we are a group of 1,000 women, more or less, yeah, all around Europe, from amazing. everywhere around the world. <laughs> and it, we just, one quick question on WhatsApp, we got connected. So th this was just amazing, right? Yeah. So we are all connected. <laughs> <laughs> it, absolutely. And it's been so inspiring, you know, meeting and being with people like you and all the other people I met through the break. Yeah, it's yeah, I mean, I'm so happy where I am right now. <laughs> That's amazing. So tell me more about uh, face yoga, um, yeah. the fundamental principles behind face yoga. Uh, how does it benefit our skin and muscles? How does it all work? Yeah. So first of all, originally when I started face yoga, because I'm, I'm Japanese and face yoga was you know, big in Japan 10 years ago. So when I was 40, 10 years ago, I heard about it just by chance. And everyone around me thought it was a joke. It sounded, it looked so crazy. Like, but I, don't know, I got so curious about this face yoga. And originally I joined, um, well, I wanted to try it out for myself because it was originally for superficial reasons. Like, like you said, um, it must be good for, the face. <laughs> yeah. And that's how I originally joined. But now that I've been practicing face yoga for 10 years, I can say that it's way more than about the face. It's actually such an amazing tool, even for kind of your inner peace. The reason is that we carry actually so much stress on our faces without even knowing it. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, a lot of, you know, our stress we carry like from shoulder up. Of course, we carry it all, all over the body and everybody knows. I mean, you're a health <laughs> guru, so you know that we should exercise our body muscles, which I don't do enough. I have to, but, <laughs> but, but the same principle applies for the face, right? We all know that when we exercise our body muscle, we get blood and oxygen flow and we feel good. So exactly the same logic for the face when you you know exercise your face muscles and we have actually 57 of them <laughs> oh 57 muscles yeah. in our face yeah wow Depending so the goal on... with face yoga is to exercise all those muscles oh not necessarily all but i mean they're all interconnected but yeah basically there are two function is to really relax your face so because we carry so much stress and then the other is to 
tone your face muscle. So just like how we would do, you know, abs or whatever workout, <laughs> you can do that exactly makes sense. the same for the face muscle. So yeah, that's a really simple logic. There's no, you know, nothing magical about just the face muscle only. It's yeah, it's just like we know it with the body muscle. And when you actually um, tone and give the blood and oxygen flow on your face, you feel so good. Sometimes I'm like on a natural high. <laughs> and it's like the gym. I mean, when you go to the gym, that you feel great for the rest of the day, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So that's really the most simple logic. Like you already, we all already know it that exercise boosts your mood, and and especially in the case of face yoga, because uh, we have all these hot spots. Your face is really relaxed, Claudia. It's good. <laughs> Because, you know, sometimes I want to go hug people on the streets because their faces are so stressed. Like forehead wrinkles in between the eyebrows. And uh -huh, these yeah. are like where we tend to hold stress. Yeah. <laughs> right. So depending like on the position, like on the, the face expression that we have, then that produces the wrinkles and the like the, where the tensions accumulate. Absolutely, exactly, because it's a repetitive mm. movement, right? So it's like right. if you think of a handkerchief, if you're always folding a handkerchief with one line, you're going to get a line there. So, of course, yeah, it's on repetitive movements. And also, it's so interesting, even the language you speak will influence how which face muscles you use yeah <laughs> ah, well i mean if you think about it depending on the language you have different pronunciations so Absolutely. you use different muscles Absolutely. Yeah. so like huh. Itali because you're italian right you said you're yes. italian yeah <laughs> so i believe like english italian uh, spanish latin languages use about i can't because i did my training like 10 years ago about all this theory i think it was like we, you use about 50% or even up to 60% of your face muscles. Whereas we Japanese, for Jap speaking Japanese, we only use about 20% of our face muscles. So it's Wow, that's a, a big difference. Yeah, and German, I think, was like up to 80% because there's more. When we, when we say face, we're also talking about the neck. We include the neck. So yeah. there are some pronunciation in German that really use your um, neck muscles as well. So it really, depending like on daily habits and yeah, how you have your facial expression and what you speak, mm -hmm. you'll be using different face muscles. Yeah, so it's That's really interesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so does it also help for when you lose fat in your body? Because mm -hmm. I've recently been losing body fat and mm -hmm. I'm noticing changes in my in my face, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, I mean my cheeks, they look a little bit more saggy, but especially my neck. So can face yoga help with this? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I almost tend to say that face yoga can help with everything almost like, yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, so what your question was, can face yoga help specifically with uh, sagging cheeks? Yeah, it's more because, you know, it's like when you like now I'm going to the gym, I'm building yeah. muscle yeah. and at the same time, I'm losing body fat. Yeah, mm -hmm. good so for you. The thing, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, right now, this, I mean, the, when you lose body fat, it, you lose it all over your body, including mm -hmm, your face. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But telling you the truth, I'm not exercising my muscle face. Yeah. So it's like, do you think because I've been losing weight, and this this also happens specifically for women over mm -hmm. forty that they right. really want to lose body fat, then you immediately see the difference in your face. Yeah. So you're saying that with faith yoga, we can uh, like counteract the what is happening when we lose body fat. Okay, I see what you mean. Well, first of all, I I wish I had that problem. <laughs> 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 that was losing so much body fat <laughs> but actually yes is the answer because there are some actually there's an interesting study um uh there are actually quite a few studies about face yoga and i think the most this is probably the most cited one by jama the i think journal of uh journal of jama american medical association i think and they had the study about uh does face yoga work or not is it a scam or oh. not Kind of study and the 
interesting thing is that it was like a modest conclusion, specifically what you said, because the um, people were middle aged um, kind of groups, and then they split it into two groups, and um, they wanted to know what would happen um, after five months doing some okay. 30 minute of face yoga every day. And the conclusion was exactly what you were saying that these, um, it wasn't a self assessment. It was actually kind of, uh, um, if you Google it, you'll see all this. Cause I think this is the most cited one for face yoga. There are other small researches, but they're, you know, all micro size. So you can't really conclude, yes, it works, but all of them modestly have a positive thing. And at the end of the day, for me, it totally, <laughs> like personal experience wise but anyway going back to that study so yeah the conclusion was that they really noticed that um that by toning so what the problem of um kind of looking hollow as you get thinner is that you look hollow and kind of unhealthy oh, oh that's not you because you're looking vibrant there <laughs> but what i mean is that this study showed that actually what they really noticed about after five months is that there was a major improvement in terms kind of the brightness and just physically how you look on spe specifically, not really the upper area, not the eye up, but it was about the cheek area. That was like right. the number one thing they noticed in this study. So it's definitely, yeah, it's possible depending on like we have over 70 poses. So you can do like mix and match and do poses. Yeah. So, okay. Yes. Yes. It's the answer. Long answer. But <laughs> <laughs> and what about time? How long does it take to see visible results in average? Because I guess it depends on your age. It depends on your skin. It depends on many factors, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it really depends, but it, it's so funny because this is so interesting also. So, and how, so for me, to be totally honest, I did not see any changes. When I started face yoga 10 years ago, I didn't, I visibly could not see any changes on myself. However, oh. <laughs> <laughs> however, other people started commenting about it, but I did not see that change myself. And it's just only after maybe three years, and I'm the most laziest face yogi. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not like, you know, a lot of my Japanese classmates who said who we did the whoops, face yoga together. Uh, we were like a group of 12. And this, this was like an initial pioneering class. And everyone was so dedicated. And I was like the laziest one. And that's why. I, <laughs> so I saw changes on their faces in a week because we were training uh -huh. together uh, every day, like eight hours a day uh, doing face yoga. So I could see their changes, but I could not see my own. So, so again, mm. I think also it depends on how skeptical you are because I think there was a skepticism in me as well. So, <laughs> oh, okay. This yeah. is interesting. I really yeah. appreciate you being honest and authentic. <laughs> you know, like, I didn't believe this, but you know, <laughs> I, I just going. went. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because first, you know, I was, you know, my background is on <laughs> economics and urban development. So all of a sudden going to the space yoga teacher training, I was like, of course, skeptical, right? It's like completely something I'm not used to. So I think that, that skepticism also, just like when you do Pilates, you know, you have to really, really visualize. And that's why when I do face yoga now, we start with visualization because seeing is believing. If you can really see it in your visual image, in your mind, that will happen, right? It, you'll, you'll make it happen. So exactly that way to order, in order to avoid my mistake of skepticism, we start like that. Like we really visualize how we want to be and then then it's so interesting. The muscles really react to that because it's all, you know, your mind and the body is connected, as we all know. And especially Absolutely. your face muscles and your mind, when you can make that connection and the more you do face yoga, you're going to be really, really concentrating and loving that face muscle of yours that you never knew existed. <laughs> like we have <laughs> donut shaped muscle here and another one here. And we really, really concentrate and lovingly do it and you will definitely see changes so to answer your question even though i made the mistake of being so skeptic and not seeing anything for my students some of my students like 
oh, recently I had my German client and she was like the complete opposite of me. She really believes in herself. And we did this visualization exercise during even that time. <laughs> wow. Her one, because where we're working on, she was concerned about asymmetry, meaning that her left side was uh, droopier than the right side. So we were working on asymmetry. And in that one hour, because of, of course, she's already such a you know believer and she has been practicing doing homework. So, but in that hour, we visibly, we both screamed because we saw that the, <laughs> the changes on the left side, the droopy side became this aligned together with the other side. So it's wow. Like some some um, poses are immediate, but in some poses you'll need to keep working on because it's muscle memory. And obviously just like any body exercise, the more you work your muscle, you'll get toner. So yeah. So normally to answer that question, normally I say it depends on the person, but within two weeks, normally people around you will say something. That's been the case. Oh, that's <laughs> inspiring. <laughs> and also, I also want to say that like focusing, of course, on the outside, absolutely for sure. But also you will feel better inside. As you do, and you will, I think, slowly kind of, kind of notice this maybe within two weeks also because you're taking the stress off your face, and when you take the stress off your face, you feel less stress on your mind and your body, so you feel better. So yeah, I would say yeah, maybe depends, but two weeks plus and to up to like me months, many months. <laughs> Okay, good to know. And so how would I, for example, incorporate face yoga into my skincare routine? Should I do it like when I wash my face at night or in the morning? Is it like a specific time of the day that it's preferred to do it? Or it's like just whenever we find the time? All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> so morning is a good time. Evening is a good time. Because morning, when we're sleeping, you know, our, we're sleeping on, like me, I'm sleeping on one side. And all the liquid is draining on my right side. Uh -huh. so when I wake up, my right side is always puffier because all that liquid has been draining here. So that's a good time to uh, uh -huh. exercise your, you know, get the blood and oxygen flow on your face and you'll more have a less puffiness on that side and feel that lymphatic flow. So morning is good. And like you said, evening, because even everybody holds stress on our faces without knowing it to a lesser or bigger degree. So um, you don't want to carry that to your bed. So you, you can just mm -hmm. relieve that facial stress before going to bed. So, but, and you can do it anytime. Like I do it. I don't, I, as I said, I'm the laziest face yogi, so I don't, <laughs> it's not like I, I have a dedicated 20 minutes. I just encope, like literally try to do it when I'm doing something else. So when I'm waking up in the morning in bed, I do my acupressure point push on my forehead. So it's not like I need to make extra time, but you already, I think, answered that. Yes, morning, evening is good. And whenever you can, like when I'm walking my dog, and sometimes I'm making crazy faces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your neighbor's like, that's yeah. just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and or chopping vegetables or, you know, going to the bathroom is a good time because there's a mirror there. So if you have poses that need to check the alignment, yeah, bathroom is a great place. <laughs> yeah. Well, it definitely makes sense. It's like whatever <laughs> you can find a few minutes, just do some face yoga and... So yeah. that it's done. Absolutely. <laughs> Perfect. And listen, recently I have come across some content on social media about mm -hmm. like some women talking more about the fascia mm -hmm. and how you can really modify your face, like manipulating your mm -hmm. fascia. Is this like there is a connection between face yoga and the fascia? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you know, the fascia is like... um. It's a connective tissue, right? Uh, for your face, the not just the face, it's all over your body. It's like yeah. one one that if you can imagine like how they sell the mandarin oranges or lemons, they're in this net and yeah. it's like that kind of thing. So all, if you visualize all that around your body, including your face, of course, and mm -hmm. that can definitely, the fascia can definitely get tense. Like 
a trauma, if you have Botox, injections, all of these would kind of uh, tense that fascia. So when you have that tension in the fascia, obviously, that's not really good for you. Tension is, I mean, <laughs> kind of sustained tension is not good for you. So definitely through face yoga, you can release that um, tension on your face muscle, which is obviously connected to the fascia. So yeah, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the movements. So it's a combination of um, relaxation techniques and toning techniques, just like body muscle, um, mm. body exercises. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> since the fascia is just deeply, I mean, we have, as you probably know, we have two layers, like the deeper one and the more superficial fascia. But those, all of those, when we do the face exercise, obviously they will move because they're just on top of the, like a net on top of the muscle. So we're actually really um, de-stressing them as we do the poses. Like, oh, oh, some of the acupressure poses are even great, kind of relaxation, just even pushing some acupressure points. And of, of course, the face, some of, <laughs> maybe I'll show you. Yeah, some of the, my favorite one is like, and these will really <laughs> take off all that kind of tension from the face muscle, but obviously uh, also relax your fascia too. And yeah, so yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that movement that you just showed, is this uh, like, give us, for example, a couple of techniques for, for beginners that someone yeah. can start doing every single day can bring like the most beneficial, let's say. Yeah. Absolutely. There are actually over 70 poses, but what I actually normally start in face yoga is not, is not straight to the poses, but actually mm. through breathing, because <laughs> this is the fundamental thing. No matter if you do the pose well, if you're not breathing properly, <laughs> that oh, oxygen, that's interesting. Yeah. And blood flow isn't going to flow on your face. Right. And th that's what you want. That's what's going to carry all that fresh oxygen and that good energy. So we normally start with breathing and really visualization and breathing. And then I go, that, that's like the almost my number one thing I do first. And, uh, and then we start the poses, kind of the poses are more at a la later step. And that way it works better because learning from my own experience. <laughs> and I've also been to face yoga classes where we start with poses without much explanation. Then, then you're, you have that skepticism in your mind and that's not going to be so beneficial for maximizing the effects of face yoga. So yeah, normally I would start with um, breathing and also taking the current stress off your face first before we can even work on the face muscle like doing the poses itself because yeah it's like you want to have a clean slate before you start so that's okay. how i normally do it and that's like my program we have this step so the first step is like <laughs> ditching bad facial habits <laughs> which we all have <laughs> and i was the one who had it the worst now you it's hard harder to see it but when i was in the un and i was still young at that time so like in order to look professional and serious <laughs> <laughs> i would always you know uh look try to look serious by frowning <laughs> like this <laughs> and as a result of doing that for 10 years i had the two vertical lines in between my uh, eyes it's called the 11 because wow. it's like number 11, two vertical. Yeah. Lines. Yeah. So, so that's like one of the things like really breaking bad facial habits in conjunction with doing face yoga, because if you still have doing this bad facial habits while doing face yoga, <laughs> there's no point. <laughs> you will have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That makes so. sense. <laughs> okay. So how long does it usually like a routine, uh, would take so considering there is the breathing the relaxation and then the face yoga itself yeah so i actually for my students i have like a seven minute flow in the morning to do or in the evening to do like a separate one 
morning it's more like for waking up and starting the day and evening is more like for taking the stress off and that's that can be completed in seven minutes so yeah so it's not it's not like a huge commitment like going to the gym for one hour every day or <laughs> it's not like that <laughs> okay so it's just a few minutes of day of, yeah. um for each day and that sh we couldn't find any excuse not to do that right absolutely not and it's so fun you can do it while drinking wine <laughs> i do not recommend that <laughs> <laughs> or sake even better <laughs> mm, yeah we're gonna go into sake later <laughs> um so what are some mistakes that people who start because you know some people they just go on youtube and start looking for uh, videos and then they just want to start something, a routine, or they, they start with exercises. But are there some mistakes that people make? Yeah. Well, first of all, that's a great thing that you're, you know, people are motivated to learn. But yes, definitely mistake is, well, mi yeah, mistake is that, again, if you, oh, right, right, if you start the face yoga poses right away, which is good, as long as you do the poses correctly, because so many times I've seen people doing the face yoga pose completely wrong, and it's like, oh, no, 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 don't. <laughs> so if you're following something, you really, really want to make sure you're doing it correctly, uh, obviously, because if you do it your own way, uh, yeah, you, you could be doing it wrong, and you don't want to have <laughs> a bad consequence. And, and another <laughs> thing is that, Yes, uh, of course, starting the pose immediately is good. But really, I think to assess first the bad facial habits that you might have first before you, you know, uh, start the poses will be good. And also kind of really, yeah, making sure that you start with a very relaxed face, which is where breathing comes in. Because I normally start with three cycles of breath and really get into it before like get into that space and it really only takes three cycles of breath you can do that in a couple of minutes mm -hmm. and then do the poses so that you're not doing like from where when you're stressed and then you're doing the pose immediately then you won't have that maximum benefit or yeah you, you want to be following like when you do when you're copying something on YouTube, let's say, then you want to have a mirror next to you to make sure you're doing it correctly. Because sometimes mm. you don't. Sometimes less is more. You don't want to. When people say, um, "Open your eyes," or let's say, "Do like open your mouth," you don't have to necessarily. It's do the maximum. That's not the point. Sometimes it's about feeling that stretch. So yeah, you don't want to overdo either. So really the point, so kind of have a mirror and make sure that you're really, really copying and not making up your own way. <laughs> Although your own way could be maybe good too, but normally normally it's best to at least, you know, follow exactly so that you're doing it correctly and not making <laughs> unnecessary stress or wrinkles on your face. <laughs> yeah, making things up really, not following what you're supposed to do. <laughs> And so can you tell me exactly how you work with your clients? And then maybe we can do a little, like, I don't know, kind of an example. I yeah. take me as a client mm -hmm. and tell me, because I, I guess like when people come to see you, then they want to solve specific issues. And then uh, I guess like you give them exercises specific for those issues. So as an example, I'm your client. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and so I have three main points mm -hmm. in my face that I would mm -hmm. like to just okay. solve. Ten. <laughs> <laughs> Take notes. <laughs> so one is my neck. Neck. Okay. The chin and the neck. Mm -hmm. And then one is the soggy cheeks. You know, they're like kind of going down. And then my eyes, they're like more like hooded eyes mm -hmm. and i've read and seen videos of people say oh yeah no you can definitely like revert that um how they look so those would be like like my three points so if i come to you and say well i want to improve this um i have 10 minutes each day that i can invest in doing this um yeah what can i do 
Yeah, absolutely. So I work one on one. I do group coaching as well, but group coaching is currently waitlisted. And then I have like oh. a self, self, uh, what is it called? Self, <laughs> self learning course as well. But yes, that's so. Oh, you have also online courses that people can just sign yeah. up and then they do it on their own pace. Yeah. And then, but for the one on ones, I have like we, what we normally start is face audit. <laughs> Right. Okay. You, you've already audited yourself. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the, that's exactly the starting point. So we together analyze your facial habits that you're normally making and what you're concerned about. So based on that, what I, because nobody needs 70 poses. <laughs> so we target, so you, you mentioned these three. So i I normally then subscribe or prescribe you, okay, these are the, what will work for these areas. So mm -hmm. you get those exercises and, and then we continue the one-on-one -on -one is how I normally do it. Yeah. But I can tell you, I can show you. So the three, you said neck, cheeks, and eyes, and those are all absolutely, there are so many great poses for it. <laughs> are they going to be funny poses? <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. So shall we then we can do a, like a quick together do it like a quick demo yes. together. Okay. Yes. So first of all, so as we normally start any any face yoga, we'll start with three cycles of breath and kind of visualizing. And so that means like what based on what you said here, what you want is your like your cheeks to not go down, but to be lifted up. <laughs> You're already looking so lifted up anyway, but, <laughs> and then you say your eyes are hooded, so you want the eyes. So obviously it's not um, cosmetic surgery, so it's not like we're going to um, change the shape of the eye. However, it's amazing because even though our eyes don't change, uh, the, the size of the eye remains the same, if you actually exercise, so one of the poses we're going to do today for number three, your eyes, is going to be the binocular pose. And then by doing the binocular pose, it's amazing because actually my mom used to say, oh, as I get older, my eyes look smaller. And I said, mom, that's not true. Your eyes don't get smaller. It's the hood on the eyes that droops down that makes it look smaller. So it's Actually, you can definitely tone the eyelids and we're going to do it the, with the binocular pose. And then that hooded area, you'll see that it will, you'll have more, it's like strength training for the eyelids. So yeah, uh -huh. you definitely see a change. And if you go to my website, you'll see some uh, hooded before and afters. It's really amazing. And also you can see my before and after, which is very embarrassing, but it's there. And definitely I see changes also in my eye area with just this binocular pose that we will do. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's impressive. And it's, yeah. And it's also good for um, eyesight. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Absolutely. Because, you know, we always are, you know, so on the phone or yeah, the computer, yeah. You're putting a lot of stress. So this is a great way to really kind of release and kind of relax also your eye area muscle. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's great. And even at this age, I don't need reading glasses. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, that you are 50. Yeah. So yeah, it's the double the benefits. Yeah. Please switch to the my, binocular. Yeah. My eye doctor is always commenting, how come at your age your eyesight is pretty good i say it's face yoga but i don't think he believes me <laughs> <laughs> <Most probably not. laughs> yeah. okay so that's what we'll do we'll do binocular pose and then for the cheeks i guess we will do um let me think you're already a smiley person <laughs> because there are good i am but <laughs> yeah but then like when i'm concentrated or stuff when i'm like my bitchy face on them i really look like yeah, i'm angry you know and then yeah. everything droops down even like yeah. my my lips you know <laughs> yeah okay okay I, okay I, okay i came up with one pose for the cheeks and then you said the neck neck meaning like you don't want the lines or what? It's more oh. hair. You know, like with age, I feel it's getting the, oh, the, the skin is thin area. Yeah. Okay, and okay, creepy, okay. I think. Creepy, okay. I think it's okay. called, you know. Okay. 
Okay, I got I got a pose for that. Okay, so we'll do it like in a flow, and uh, we will start with breathing. So, okay, if you like, well, you don't have to close your eyes, but it's actually it's completely up to you. You don't have to follow my instruction whatsoever. You're free. <laughs> But if you like, you can close your eyes just for this three cycles of breath. Mm -hmm. Because when we close our eyes, it's so much easier to go inside. Kind of all the visual um, distractions are gone. So it's easier to concentrate on really loving your face muscles. So if you like, close your eyes and your shoulders are really relaxed, meaning that it's really down, far away from your ears, not tense. And your hands, you can just rest them on your lap or on your table. And then we're just going to take three cycles of breath. So as you breathe in, you're going to breathe in through your nose. And just visualize you're breathing in all that positive, good things from the universe to you. And as you exhale... Again, you're going to exhale through your nose and just visualize any of your forehead stress, the stress that you carry on your face, slowly, slowly melting. And we're going to do that two more times. Inhale. All the good things are coming to Claudia. And as you exhale, any of the tension and stress you're carrying on your face unconsciously is slowly, slowly melting away. Hmm. And one last time, inhale through your nose. Hmm. Positive things coming to you. And as you exhale, the stress on your face or any worries you carry on your face, we all do, slowly slowly melting away and for 10 seconds just keep breathing as it is as we did and just visualize ah so claudia said three things she so you're visualizing the claudia that already exists it's you're almost there and that claudia her eyes are wide open, seeing the beauty of the world. Her cheeks are lifted up and her um, chin and jaw area is smooth. And she already exists. She is you right here. Ah, and now we are going to, in five seconds, open our eyes. Five, four, three, two, one. Open your eyes like a flower blooming. Exactly. Okay. So now you're ready to start. Yes. <laughs> Are you, do you feel ready now? <laughs> yes. I mean, this that was so nice. It was just a very <laughs> short, but you know, just being with my eyes closed and listening to you. Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, great. Okay. So we'll do this in a flow. We said next cheek and eyes okay so we're going to start with the eyes because i like to start from the top and work down so actually so for the eye one this is slightly let's say level two like intermediate level but it's not that difficult so it's called the binocular pose and we're just going to put a binocular on our face on our so this is how we we can do it together it's like so we're going to take our eye hands like this and yeah and gently gently smooth out your forehead as you gently gently come down so visualize you're really ironing out any stress on your forehead and you'll stop right where your eyebrow muscles are yep and then once you stop here you're going to push it apart very very gently apart like this so that any stress that we carry here, right here, the 11 lines that I used to have, is physically gently stretched. No need to push it to pull it apart too hard, but gently. And then the thumb is just resting on your cheek. 
just gently. If you push it too hard, it's hard to do this exercise. So just gently. Yeah, good. So now, keeping your eyes level, you want to, or the face level, so don't move your face at all. You're perfectly level right now. And you're going to open your eyes as wide as you can. Or keep it for five seconds. Ah! Okay, stop, one second, stop, stop, take, take your hands off. <laughs> what happened? Okay, so you were putting stress on your forehead. Okay, maybe oh. what, I'll, what I'll, I'll ask you now is to open your eyes as wide as you can. Do you see that you're using your uh, yeah. lines to open your eyes? So you don't want to do that. <laughs> oh, okay. So how do I open my eyes yeah, now? Exactly. So this is the oh, just training. like this. So really, really, you know what? Uh, let, let me um get the. I'll show you the face <laughs> eye muscle. Hold on, one second. <laughs> Maybe it's easier to show you rather than me explaining. So, in yeah, we have actually this donut shaped muscle around the eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then. This is actually the muscle you want to be using when you open your eyes. So when, when I asked you to open your eyes, you saw that you were using the forehead lines. Yeah. <laughs> so so I it won't I, and yeah, it will gradually happen. Don't worry. It's like riding a bicycle. Once you do it, once you know how to do it, you will be okay. But in the beginning, you'll just have to. This binocular pose is perfect for training exactly using your this donut, cute donuts around your eyes instead mm -hmm. of your forehead so when you yeah do, and now yeah. i see why you said before it's like you need to have a mirror because yeah. you really need to see what you're doing exactly. because i was not aware of <laughs> what is gonna what's gonna have what's happening right yeah oh yeah so this will be a classic example of what new students can make mistakes because if you're yeah. concentrating on a pose you don't want to be you know, make creating extra stress. That's what I meant, like extra unnecessary wrinkles while doing the poses. You want, really want to make sure everything else is relaxed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, so yes, yeah, checking the mirror to make sure your copying yeah. is good. So so that, oh, sorry, I had to disrupt it because I, I didn't want you to <laughs> do it wrong. So yeah, so okay. So we'll, we'll start with putting the binoculars again. And mm -hmm. so we're going to go gently. So we're really ironing out all of that oh stress or lines that we carry on our forehead and we'll stop right at the eyebrow and then pull it apart very gently so that our 11 lines are nice and stretched and we have the thumb gently resting okay good and now with your forehead relaxed as possible don't don't worry too much because worrying is not good anyway <laughs> but as possible um you're going to open your eyes just using that cute remember that donut shaped muscle around mm. your eyes so you really can visualize your cute donuts here and connect your you know oh that awareness your awareness to those cute donut shaped muscles that you never knew existed but now you know and you can always yeah. send it love and when you send it love it actually really sends you back love it's really you know <laughs> they're so cute <laughs> they're so cute so okay so we're going to open our eyes as wide as you can only only concentrating using that two donut shaped muscle around yeah good claudia your forehead mm. is so much more relaxed now yeah yes. Yes, yes. i can definitely notice like yeah. i'm using different muscles yeah. yeah yeah and then now after that you're going to without moving your head you're going to look up just with your eyes at something bright in the sky so it's going to look like this Oh, so I have to like to close my eyes a little bit. No, or yes, yes. So I have to keep them all wide open. Well, you you're kind of um, squinting uh, towards uh -huh. something. Yes. Yeah, so if you completely close it, it's not an exercise anymore. Oh, Claudia, your your uh, face went up. So you want your face uh, to okay. keep level because what you want because if your face goes up, it's harder to feel the lower eyelid area strengthening. So yeah. Okay. So your... what I have to feel is below here. Uh, absolutely uh -huh. so okay let's, let's see if you can feel it so keep your face right exactly where you are beautifully yeah. exactly level and then just with your eyes good you're going to look up at something bright in the sky and keep it for five seconds do you feel your lower eyelids 
even kind of vibrating. I mean, I also feel the upper eyelids, I guess. No, probably yeah. the eye. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah, but I feel it here. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And then keep it for five seconds. Yeah, and then you can come out of the pose, put the binoculars down for now. So that what you did is that you were actually pumping oxygen and blood flow on your lower eyelid because you were really kind of <laughs> working out the lower eyelid, toning the lower eyelid, which we don't normally do. <laughs> okay, so, so, so it will be like first put the binocular on mm -hmm. and then it's five seconds open the eyes and yes. five seconds looking up. Yes, exactly. Okay, and how many repeat, times? Yes. So you repeat that three times and three times is one set and you can do up to three sets, meaning in plain English, you can do from three to nine times. <laughs> okay, as long as you want, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> in face yoga, somehow we count in sets, but yeah, in, in you know, plain English, it's three to nine times. So <laughs> it's okay. not, it doesn't take that long. And this is the, the one that for sure is um, keeping me away from reading glasses. <laughs> wow, okay. This is one we're gonna start doing daily. <laughs> yeah, and then this is the one that's perfect. Great for the eye area. So the whole, because we're working out the whole donut shaped muscle around the eye. So really when you're opening your eyes, and when you're we're doing this exercise, you're actually toning that whole donut. So including your eyelids. So that's that's why it's good for mm. the hooded eyes as well, for the same logic. Yeah. Okay. So that was the binocular. Exciting. <laughs> Exciting. And next we're coming down to the mid-level of the face. The one that you said was the cheek. So mm -hmm. this is a good one for the cheek muscle. So when we smile, we actually have Again, these Latin names are not important, but since you're Italian, I guess it makes sense to you, These all these Latin names, zygomaticus, major, minor. So we have these smiling muscles, and one is a really long, big one, the major, and one is a, there, anyway, it doesn't matter, but we have smiling muscles. So that's what we exactly we're gonna work on for the cheek lifting exercise. So this okay. is what it's gonna look like. It's called um, the, well, these poses were originally all in Japanese names, so my translation might sound strange, but it's like oishi kao in Japanese, which is a delicious face. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute! It's such a cute name! <laughs> yeah, this is a pose I like because I love eating. <laughs> so we can do it together, actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to smile. And when we say smile, smile means sometimes a fake smile or like when you ask, my kids to smile when they were small, they will go, ee. it's like <laughs> <laughs> horizontal. That's not a smile. A smile. <laughs> what we, a smile means that you're lifting the cheeks, the corner of your mouth is going to be high. And mm -hmm. yeah, so that's what we want to do. And this is such a powerful exercise because it makes you happy also. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're smiling. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you probably know that smiling is good for you. And yeah, and there's some interesting studies that even if you're not happy, if you lift the corner of your mouth just two millimeters, you feel happy because you're sending a signal to your brain that my corner of the mouth is lifted and you have happy hormones pumping, even if you're not happy. And you kind of can then end up being happy. So, <laughs> so this is a good exercise. <laughs> okay, so you are already such a great smiler. So yes, so keep the smile. And without losing that, so really visualize that both corners of your mouth are really going up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And keeping that, you're going to stick your tongue out in the middle. Mm -hmm. And keeping that corner of the mouth, you're going to go to the right. Yeah, good. And then back to the middle. And then to the left. And then back to the middle. And then we can come out of the pose for now. Because oh my it's, God. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite strenuous, right? It's oh, really, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's really toning the cheek muscle to really, really tone it so it doesn't go down so yeah. it's here the muscle isn't it yes so like here's actually... where i felt the pain like more yeah I mean, oh hopefully like... it's not so painful but, <laughs> but no yeah, not too painful but the you burn, know you the can burn, feel it the workout 
absolutely and that's good that means you're it's your work definitely it's working and yes yeah, so it's actually there's uh, two major muscles on the cheek that you were using one is the one that's connecting the corners of your mouth towards the kind of the outer the temple and then the one towards the corner towards the corner of your mouth so you're really kind of working out these smiling muscles and it's really good for lifting up the cheek so that's yes. the yummy delicious face <laughs> so as as for last one you can do it you can do like one round is one so you can do that three to nine times okay yeah. so i i should do first all the exercises for the eyes and then all oh, oh, should i do like one eye one cheek, and one neck oh yeah and repeat the sets or Good question. Actually, um, for me, it's easier that I just do it like a uh, eye area nine times, cheek area nine times. Like mm -hmm. that is easier because I'm already in that in that zone. But yeah. again, at the end, it doesn't matter as long as you're breathing. <laughs> because oh yes, yeah, sometimes when we're concentrating so much, like the that binocular pose is the one. So many times my students are like not breathing. I'm like oh no, yes. <laughs> Are you breathing? Because the whole point is that you have to breathe to get that <laughs> oxygen and blood flow. So as long as you're breathing and you're relaxed and yeah, yeah. So, but to be honest, for me to answer that question, I just uh, do batch, do the eyes together, cheek together. And then the last one would be the neck uh, exercise or the chin <laughs> exercise that we're do we're going to do now. So I would just do A, B, C and just do the three to nine times in that way but it's up okay. to you as long as you're breathing and, <laughs> and it's all right. relaxed. yeah yeah, yeah so. exactly <laughs> so for the last one the, the chin one <clears throat> this is again a cute one in japanese it's called chu kudasai which means Ooh. give give me a kiss <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> many funny names yeah yeah so cute these names are kind of hard to translate in english <laughs> But my, my original training was in Japanese and these were the post names and we were literally studying, okay, give me a kiss and <laughs> delicious, delicious face. Okay, so I'll show you the chukudasai, give me a kiss. And this one, because you said, uh, this is for the neck and also the chin area. And this is a really good one. You will see that we actually have another um, donut shaped muscle around our mouth. So we have two around our eyes and one around the mouth. And this is a really, really great uh, muscle to work out because if you don't work out this muscle, it goes down, which means that when this mouth goes down, you get bulldog lines and uh -huh. like that. Yeah. So it's, it's I'm starting, you mean like this one? So oh, that's like, a na yeah. nasal libial. Nasal libial oh. lines are here, like connecting uh, the mouth and the nostril. Mm -hmm. And then we mm -hmm. have the bulldog lines are the one if your mouth yeah. goes down, um, yeah. But this is a great one to strengthen your mouth because um, this is like a bus stop. So, so many of our face muscles go from here everywhere <laughs> from the mouth to it connects, everything is interconnected. So it's great to strengthen your mouth. And by doing this exercise, you will see that you will, we will really feel it in the chin area. So okay. We, yeah, we'll do it and we'll see. <laughs> So first, we're going to make a circle with our finger like this, like a okay. Hopefully, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean anything rude in Italian. I don't know, but no, it's okay. Weird. It's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this, this is what we normally do for just to make the alignment sure for this pose. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to stick our mouth like this, all oh, because our lips are also muscles. Right? So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, we're going to stick our mouth out, like really making an O, oh, mm -hmm, um, like really octopus. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, like a round. So we normally open our mouth, obviously, this way. But what we want to do is shape it just like our donut, the, or our donut shaped muscle is round. And we really want to, oops, fill all that circle. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And you want to keep like about one space open for a pencil to go in, which is the way to that you're really, really opening up and toning all that mouth muscle 360. You mean the space between the lips? 
So inside you want to keep, yeah, like one, one circle that almost a pen can go in. So it will be like this. Okay. So that way you're really as even as possible opening it into 360 degrees rather than opening this way, which we normally do, but exactly as round as possible. And this will help you guide you to align that lip. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> but we don't need the, our hands to do the pose. Yeah, no, but it's just to help you to make a, a guide. Really round. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so once, once you have that, we are going to look up. Do you have any neck problems? No. Okay. If you don't, if you have neck problems, don't do the following. What we're going to do is we're going to look up. But if you have neck problems, the neck is very sensitive. So you don't need to look up. It will still work. But if you don't have neck problems, when you look up, the more you look up, the more exercise you will feel on the chin. So you oh. can you can just see how, how you feel and go go gradually. You don't have to go all the way up first, but just literally go slightly only first. Yeah. So let's do okay. it. So mm -hmm. shoulders are completely relaxed. Yep. <clears throat> and our body posture is so important, right? Because when we're hunched punch back, we feel negative. There's again lots of studies. So we want to keep our heart space open. Yep. And really ready to receive all the good things. And then we're going to make this alignment. So we're going to fill this circle. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Yeah, yeah, it's good, good. And then you can take out the um, hands if you like. And then you're going to look up as much as you feel comfortable. Do you feel that you're using? Mm. Yeah. So let's keep it for 10 seconds. I will count to 10. 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And you can come out of the pose. <gasps> Do you feel that? Yeah. <laughs> but, <clears throat> I mean, I remember doing this exercise once. I was, I was trying yeah. some uh, face exercises. Yeah. So when I do this, do I ha also have to like do try to engage those muscles too no, or it's no all... right now you, you're really just focusing on that on on this this is our focus right now on the mouth muscle but by looking up we're actually strengthening i mean if you want to love them also you can but sometimes <laughs> it's good to be specific when you're doing a pose so yeah. normally i would say like okay for this pose we're really going to concentrate on this area so for this one i i just it's give me a kiss so we're just going to be concentrating on the lips but as a result of looking up you will definitely uh, feel feel these areas as well but hopefully you felt it do you feel your mouth? i did yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely all around yeah <laughs> that's like the primary one but that primary one will lift up it's all connected right for the to lift up the chin and the neck area as well. And of course, the whole face. So this mouth muscle is so important. And so this is like a great one to work out the mouth, but yet you're actually working everything also. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I have these three exercises. <laughs> I'm gonna make, I want to make give myself a challenge and do it for 30 days in a row. I'm going to follow your instructions. I'm going to create another video where I'm going to show the results and see like how the whole experience was. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to oh, this. Thank you. That's so <laughs> I'm gonna exciting. I'm going to take a photo and then yeah. like the before and the after so that we can actually see like the changes. Fabulous. And also Good. take note of like how you feel also because it's also an internal process too and like it, it can, right yeah yes. yeah yeah so that's oh that was fun i'm so excited <laughs> about this <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you so much sarika oh. so now before we close mm -hmm. i want to um know more about your parallel business what well, you have two more businesses right one is okay and then i've recently read on our breaker newsletter that you have launched some uh, uh skincare products uh yeah. tell me more about everything please <laughs> oh yeah thank you i'm multi-passionate so <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> i i love i love 
sake, which is our national beverage. Uh, have you tried it? I haven't. I don't really drink alcohol, so oh, okay. I we, might we, have we, in the past. We have a non-alcoholic sake too. It's basically it's interesting. Fermented, fermented rice, and it's full of nutrition. And we drink that oh. non-alcoholic one, like for kids, or it's called amazake. So it's super nutrition. They they say it's like a drip, a natural drip, <laughs> because it's got wow, the, yeah. Right. Is it because you say it's fermented, so that means it contains, it's a probiotic beverage? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like yogurt, but uh, in oh. the case of sake, there's yeast added, which is um, becomes alcohol. But we have a non-alcoholic version that's great for kids, and it's like a super health drink. So definitely, that's good. <laughs> Please tell me where I can find that, because I'm also working on improving my gut health. Oh. And I'm trying to incorporate as many uh, probiotics and prebiotics oh, yeah. foods. But I never oh, heard of this. Oh, this is a perfect one. It's called Amazake. Yeah. Amazake. Yeah. Okay. And I'm sure, you know, actually, I think they were starting, I know that um, they're starting a, a sake brewery in Italy. Um, yeah, yeah. So maybe you can get it from them. I don't know, but I will. I will send you later. Yes, I'm gonna try <laughs> then to add to any information we have. Just any link in the description so that anyone can uh, yeah. can look at it. And awesome. Even if, it's, even if it's not, in, oh, you know, because there's nowadays there. I love sake so much, and nowadays there's actually sake breweries all over Europe. It's amazing. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Two in Spain. Um, two in or oh no, three in France and yeah and I know the one in Spain they make amazaki I have it in my fridge oh my gosh okay <laughs> I might also... be going to Spain this yeah. year so I might get some oh but actually you can make it at home too because I'm also a home brewer and I, I make oh. mine <laughs> yeah, I brew oh my gosh that's so much more information I think we need to create another video <laughs> for all this <laughs> I, I love I love my sake <laughs> <laughs> but so do you actually produce to sell what's your sake business what, yeah. what is it about no i i actually don't um in, i'm not touching import export at all so basically mm -hmm. i'm sharing my love of sake through uh, my consultancy and actually my sake education course uh, i have one oh. a japanese one is sold by the sake industry in japan and I also certify people as in sake. We have sake certifications. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. So, but this is a B two B. So you don't work with uh, like private people, but more oh. like with companies. Also, well, I've done corporate stuff, and also I do um, with normal normal people tastings. And I'm also an ambassador in Japan to share our like original. Um, origins of sake we have something called doburoku which is yes it's like basically a fermented rice beverage that's uh it's kind of low in alcohol but that was like the original sacred beginnings of sake because it was the mm -hmm. offering to the gods for good harvest that was the origins of sake so yeah so i'm i'm like an ambassador <laughs> for that as well so like i love sake so much because i just it was a completely um, shock to me when I learned that sake in Japan, which is 2,000 years old, a craft is seriously declining. And yeah, huh. it's... Why? A number of reasons, lots of reasons, actually, because the negative image of sake, it's like sake to get drunk. <laughs> and there's a lot of um, competition with, you know, beautiful wines from Europe. <laughs> right. And, and yeah. there are so many other drinks that you can do. And why stick with, you know, what used to be kind of an image of an old man's drink, like my grandfather's drink. So they had an image issue. And that's why the sake consumption is like one third in 50 years. Oh, wow. yeah, so that's like a tragedy, right? When I learned that. So that's how I started in sake. Like, like, like it was not meant to be a business. I mean, originally, I didn't know you can even have a business like this. <laughs> I was like, oh, I want to bring sake, more sake, and save, not have this go to a serious decline. So that's how I really literally started. <laughs> My first well, topic. I think it's amazing though because it's <laughs> something that is part of your culture uh -huh. that you felt like I don't want this to get really lost, you know, especially because it's such a long tradition. So you started just as a hobby. I just 
want to keep part of my cultural background alive for years to come. And then it became a business because other people were interested, I guess. I mean, yeah. uh, it's not a business because you actually have people asking for it. Absolutely. And actually, to be honest, I never liked sake. Like 11, 15 years ago, if you ask me, because I'm actually from a sake. My, my grandfather is from one of the major sake production sites in Japan called mm -hmm. Nagano. And what he was drinking always before was so terrible i thought oh sake is never for me <laughs> until when i was an adult a grown adult and at the time i was still with the un and um i by chance i had this amazing sake and i couldn't <laughs> believe this is sake it's completely different from what i've drank before <laughs> <laughs> wow, you, you can you can tell there are different types of sake. Like there there are different types of wines, so it all depends on the production, and yeah, so you can uh, tell the difference between yeah. the types. Yeah, and now sake is so much better than you know fifty years ago, even because at that time or e even before, uh, there were lots of bad sake around after the war, and uh, you know, with the rice being such a precious commodity people would skimp on the ingredients and you have like adding bad stuff in sake so it had a bad reputation from these uh -huh. kind of scamming <laughs> sake and that's why yeah that's that's kind of now you don't have that and uh there's so many beautiful ones and now including in Italy even so <laughs> wow that's interesting okay okay looking oh, forward yeah. to that so I'm more interested into the oh, other yeah. I got so carried away because I love sake so much. And this is another thing. And, and exactly like, like you who don't drink alcohol, which is really good. And I mean, not to say that it's bad to drink alcohol either, but <laughs> I love to enjoy my sip. It's like my meditation when I do my sake rituals. But anyway, so I thought for people who don't drink alcohol and for you know, I was trying to look for other ways to share this beauty of sake. And I've been making my own DIY products for 10 years. Maybe you do you make your own products too? Not really. <laughs> I've been willing to, but yeah, I haven't really got so, into it. Oh, it's so fun. I made it kind of out of necessity when I was in Vietnam. And, you know, when you, when you pick up a cream and look at the back, well, not just Vietnam, but anywhere, you see like, whole list of ingredients yes. with, it's like I thought you know what I'm better off with coconut oil so I just started using coconut oil 10 years ago and and then I was experimenting putting lavender oil and da, 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 da. and so one of the experiments of course was to put my favorite sake <laughs> why not <laughs> yeah why not and you know grandma always my grandmother in Nagano used to say yeah, yeah sake you can put it on your skin and you know it's it's famous the sake is beauty beauty um benefits like it's super hydrating it's got all that enzymes from the fermentation so yeah it's all these amino acids lots of fun acids that will work wonders so you know apparently geishas have been bathing in sake and <laughs> for oh, oh. Yeah, hundreds of years so, so i mean it's not like i invented the sake beauty product or anything but it's been around i mean it's it's kind of well known in japan that sake is it's a great um, self-care. You don't have to mm -hmm. drink it. You can put it on your face. Like even a toner, you can put half sake and half chamomile tea and shake it and you have a toner. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, you have to use it like within four days or because it's got no preservatives. But anyway. Right. Yeah. So that's how I was experimenting. And, and then so I've been always using the last 10 years. I've, um, yeah, my own products and... Uh, just completely by chance last year, actually, this was even after the break. This is a really completely, life is so unexpected. It's always <laughs> so long because I thought I would be working in the UN until I retire at age 62, but it's completely <laughs> gone a different direction. And this was last year, I was at a, um, a woman entrepreneurs, like a meeting, gathering. And I was there with my sake things. And I met some other people who were producing really interesting products for uh, to solve a specific problem. And when I heard that, I thought, oh, wait, 
products. I never thought of products, but my I'm like the biggest fan of my own product. <laughs> So I thought, wait, is there a way that, because I love my thing, uh, it's all natural and there's, you know, I know what's inside. So it's super, I'm so confident and I know it works because <laughs> I've been using because it. Because you have tried. That's yeah, the thing, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And I thought, wait, but I had no idea because it sounded, uh, in, I mean, I had I don't have anything to do with beauty industry, really. I mean, mm -hmm. in my life, and uh, I had no idea how if it's even possible for just a common person like me to start a brand. But when I talked to these other women who started their own products, it sounded all possible. <laughs> I was like, if all them women can yeah, do it, why not? Yeah. And, I, and I asked them, oh, and how did you like start the, like the very first thing? And they're like, no, no, I did it in my kitchen. And she started delivering this herself on the, on the, on, this was in London. So on the tube. And I was like, wow, wow. <laughs> but because, but you know, a, a skincare item is so regulated. So I didn't even know what to, and there was, such a process of, <laughs> of obviously researching and getting my assessments done and then registering on the EU cosmetic database. So this took like, <laughs> it was like, I was like starting from scratch and really researching and contacting people doing it. So it took some months and yes, finally it's soft launching. <laughs> Whoa, okay. So what kind of products are you making? <laughs> yeah, I didn't even say <laughs> It's a basically sake infused balm. I only have one product. <laughs> oh, it's a balm yeah. that is balm. used for what? Yes, it's an all over balm, which means like within the EU definition of all over balm, that means it's okay to use on hair, skin, face. So in, in my balm, it's I say it, it's the sake infused balm. It's all over for hair, eyes, yeah, even beard, tattoo care. <laughs> basically. Ah like one bomb and clutter free because you don't have to have multiple plastic things to <laughs> keep care of or different body minimal parts. Skin, yeah, minimal skin yeah skin products so like clutter free one product the bomb <laughs> okay so where can people find it can be bought all, all over europe everywhere on the world yeah, so right now it's soft launching and my website right here on this Zoom screen is where you can find it. <laughs> yeah, okay. And, and I've got it now. The sarika.com? Yes, yes. Okay. And then once you go there, there's a, a door to the sake bomb. <laughs> so now I have orders. I just got orders, more orders and I'm so excited. But this is kind of like, almost like a crowdsourcing way uh, because this is my soft launch and... And that's how I'm trying to, um, rather than, you know, going to investors, <laughs> this mm -hmm. is like my way to gather the sources so that I can make the packaging better, much more sustainable. And so I'm experimenting right now with four different containers, of, of course, all plastic free, but I'm experimenting these <laughs> different things. Nice. And this soft launch is allowing me to get those <laughs> do do that kind of thing yeah <laughs> so it's like a sustainable uh all natural product yeah yeah absolutely okay. i mean the ingredients are only five sake obviously <laughs> <laughs> that's the main one <laughs> yeah coconut oil lavender oil coca butter which is a vegan alternative to um beeswax um and then candelilla wax which is also again a vegan alternative because I used to, I've done so many formulations and um, I was using beeswax, but then my daughter told me, you know, beeswax is not vegan. <laughs> and I said, oh my goodness, I didn't even, you know, I'm so, this is all really like cosmetic world and everything is so new to me. And I was like, oh, of course. So that's how I ended up with candelilla wax, which is a great alternative to beeswax, which is really commonly used, even though. Candelilla wax is more expensive, but it's really, I now I, I'm happy with the formula. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Lots of testing and <laughs> melting things on people's pockets like my, <laughs> I gave it to my son to take it with him and he put it in his jeans and it, it all melted. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I mean, he need to test it, right? 
<laughs> now you know. You don't want to have melting products. <laughs> it's been trial and error, man. Massive trial and error. <laughs> but yeah, those are the five products. Did I say five? Yeah. Coconut butter. Yes. Um, yes. Candelilla wax, coconut oil, sake, and lavender oil. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Okay, Sarika, oh, this is amazing. I don't want to take more of your time, but uh, I'm going to add all your links in the description. But do you want to tell people where they can find you if you are more um, like active on a specific social media and how they can interact with you? Oh, thank you, Claudia. Well, the, my website is right there, dsarika.com. And um, <laughs> my completely random, <laughs> it's like a diary of uh, my activities are on Instagram at, the, at tarika.sake. <laughs> okay. And it's Very like fun. sake and balm and face yoga all in one, which is a... Uh, all together. <laughs> <laughs> you get all the information. Yes, I'm, uh, chaotic <laughs> well this was amazing i can't wait to see to start doing faith yoga um thank you so much for your time for all your expertise it was a really nice chat i really appreciate it and oh. it was just amazing to connect with you yeah so. thank you so much claudia i really really enjoyed being with you really and Thank you <laughs> for having me. It was my pleasure. Oh.